I've loaded the sample project, and within the sample project, I've displayed the create data table.aspx page. And the goal here is going to be to fill a data table with information from the file system and then bind that data table to this grid control so we see the output in the grid. Right now, there's really nothing on the page. Let's look at the code. First of all, note that at the top of this page, I have an import statement for system.io, so we don't have to keep referring to the system.io namespace. I also have an import statement for system.data, although the project template would do that for me, even if I didn't include that there. OK, so down here, we have code that's going to do the work for us. This procedure starts by creating a new instance of the system.data dot data table class. It's interesting to note that since that class is in the system dot data namespace, it is database agnostic. It knows nothing about any specific database. Within that data table, I'll add two columns, one for file name, one for size. In the file name column, I want the type to be system dot string. So I use the get type operator in VB to calculate that. The same thing for the size column. I want that to be an int 32 value. Probably need to make it a long int, but that's good enough for this demonstration. I'll make an int 32 value and set that as the type. Now we'll create a new directory info object using, as the source of the directory info, the request.path. That's the location of this page. We use server.matpath to convert that to a real path and use get directory name to retrieve the directory part of that. Now we get a directory info using that directory name, so we'll get all the information about the directory that contains this page. I'm going to create a variable dr as data row. And I haven't talked about data row, but it should be pretty clear what that is. That's one row of data within a data table. Now I'll loop through for each file info in the result of calling the getFiles method. For each one of them, I'll add a new row to the data table. And the new row method returns a data row object. We'll set the fields. The 0th field will be the file name. The 1 field, the first field, will be the length of the file. And then we add the new data row to the rows collection of the data table. And that's how you fill the content of a data table manually. To review, you set up the fields here. That sets the schema of the table. Then, for each row you want to add, you create a new row by calling the new row method, fill in the fields, and then call the add method of the rows property of the data table to add the new row to the rows collection. So we fill the data table. That's doing all that work. And then down here, all we need to do to bind the data table to the grid view control is to set the data source property of the control. Well, not quite, because we have to also indicate to ASP.NET that we want to, at this point, have it go out, retrieve the data, and redisplay the contents of the grid. And that's what the data bind method does. Setting the data source doesn't actually refresh the grid. All it does is set a property of the grid. We have to explicitly tell it when to go out and get the data and redisplay the data. Well, let's see how this page works. Well, apparently it did work. You'll see that we loop through all the files in the current pages folder, and for each file, displayed its name and size in the grid. How did it get there? We filled a data table first and then bound the grid view control to the data table that we created.